What a save for La Russa. Kent Botfield, reliever turn starter, goes for his league-leading 12th victory tonight, while Big Mac continues his quest for who knows how many. Arizona's surprising power is keeping pace with McGuire. Matt Williams is having an MVP year, and the D-backs have the best home record in baseball. The craziest park in the West saw history last night as Jose Jimenez no-hit Arizona. The Cardinals and Diamondbacks collide next on FX Baseball Saturday Night. It's a hot night in Phoenix, Arizona. Over 100 degrees outside. But as we come inside Bank One Ballpark, it's a cool 73. Tonight, it's Mark McGuire and the St. Louis Cardinals and the Arizona Diamondbacks. And hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Ken Brett. Last night was supposed to be Randy Johnson against Mark McGuire, but a 25-year-old rookie named Jose Jimenez stole the show by no-hitting Arizona. Ken, you almost threw two in your major league career. What does that feel like? You bring up such bad memories. <laughs> almost. Partner. You start to get excited about the sixth or seventh inning. Of course, the most important thing, win the ball game. He had some great help last night. He did succeed. And how about the help he got from Eric Davis defensively? Eric Davis saved him two times in the ball game. First in the sixth inning, look at this diving catch. I know it looks like a repeat, but in the ninth inning, off the bat of Dave DeLucci, once again, the rolling turnover catch, that saved the no-hitter. And what makes it more remarkable is the fact that Jose did it against a hot Arizona offense led by Matt Williams and Luis Gonzalez. Two guys in the top ten of the National League and hitting, but that's not the only story for Arizona. Last year, they were a bad hitting club. This year, top hitting club in the National League. They have really turned it around. We have a lot to talk about in tonight's ball game. Kent Bottenfield goes for his 12th win. Arizona tries to pad their lead in the National League West. And we'll also be listening to Cardinals third base coach, Renee Latchman, from his third base box. And Renee knows he's got some sluggers to watch out for tonight. One on his side, one on Arizona's. For the Diamondbacks, there is the great Matt Williams with 20 home runs already this year. And the man who hit 70 last season, Big Mac of St. Louis. And we welcome you back to Bank One Ballpark, where a crowd of well over 45,000 on hand to watch game three of this four game series between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the St. Louis Cardinals. And here we go, Brian Anderson facing Joe McEwing. And McEwing takes strike one. Anderson, the 27 year old lefty from Geneva, Ohio, going against one of the real rookie stars, one of the great stories in the major leagues this year, Joe McEwing, who leads major league rookies. With a 316 batting average, a little guy at 5'10, 170. And he takes a fastball. It is nothing in two. Anderson has great control again. Pretty good example right there of his control. Fastball outside corner, strike one. Fastball inside corner, strike two. The ERA a little high this year. We'll talk about that and the reasons why that ERA is high in just a few moments. Well, it comes right after McEwing. Three pitches and see you later. Well, the St. Louis Cardinals lineup that Tony La Russa penciled out earlier tonight, Joe McEwing leads things off to be followed by Darren Bragg. McEwing has a 17 game hit streak going. Then Mark McGuire, Ray Lankford, Thomas Howard, Edgar Renteria, Eli Marrero, David Howard, and Kent Bottenfield. McGuire's been hot with four home runs in his last seven games. And now number two hitter Darren Bragg. So Anderson has thrown four pitches all in the strike zone. Darren was the young man they picked up from the Boston Red Sox not only because of his ability to play the outfield but also his leadership and the intensity he brings in that clubhouse and outside. I think his nickname in Boston was the kamikaze. Yep. And that's the way he plays the game. I mean there is no wall that is a friend. He'll go through anything. He'll break up the double play. He'll run into the wall. That's just the way he plays the game. And La Russa loves those kind of guys. There's a line drive into left center field, a base hit, and Darren Bragg is on. He races around first, but he'll hold right there. Let's take a look at the numbers on Brian Anderson. He has not pitched a whole lot this year, and I think that's one of the reasons his ERA is so high. 
He's got the basic four pitchers. He has got to get ahead in the count. He is not the kind of a pitcher that can throw behind. He's got very good control. But look at the opponent's batting average at 365. He has not been as sharp as you would like him to be. And he also gives up a lot of home runs. So keep that in mind as well. With this guy coming up, I think I'll keep it to the front of my mind. He's got 23 this year. He led all of baseball and shattered every single home run record with 70 home runs last year. And as he steps to the plate, well, everybody brings their cameras and there's flashes all over the ballpark. They love these moments. We saw them all last year at Bush Stadium and away when Big Mac and Sammy Sosa were battling for the home run race. Fouls that one off. Crowd gets excited when he swings and fouls off a pitch. I mean, that's the kind of excitement. That he brings to the ballpark. I mean, you and I are driving to the ballpark at what about three o'clock this afternoon. We pull up next to guy next to a guy on the highway. What's he got in the front seat? St. Louis. St. Louis cap. <laughs> St. Louis cap. I said, well, where is he going? And it's not like this is Max hometown. He pops it up. Foul territory, racing over Travis Lee. He has room and makes the catch. So McGuire from Pomona, California, now. Lives during the season in St. Louis is the second out, and Brian Anderson has done his job in defensively. He is an excellent infield with Matt Williams on the left side at third base. He's won a gold glove. Andy Fox is at short. Tony Womack in for Jay Bell tonight at second base, and Travis Lee at first. Gonzalez, Finley, and Gilkey are in the outfield, and Finley's won two gold gloves. And there is Steve Finley. They miss him in San Diego. He's had a terrific year here with the Arizona Diamondbacks with 15 home runs already. He's just used to being in first place. He wanted to play in a first place team. There you go. Well, he has really responded, although he was on a first place team last year that won the National League. And Finley only hit 249. And they thought he might be on the downside of his career. He's only 34. Well, here is Ray Langford. They really think he is on the upside of his career. Ray coming back from a left knee problem. Anderson with two out in the top of the first inning. Arizona won the first game of this series. St. Louis, of course, came back last night with an impressive no hitter by the rookie Jose Jimenez. So the series is even at one win each. And there is Jose. He's still sitting by himself. And yeah, no one would go near him <laughs> last know. night in between innings. One of those cardinal rules in baseball. Pitcher's got a no hitter. Don't talk to him. Make him sit by himself. Don't say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And he should be nice and relaxed <laughs> tonight. Just trying to take all this in. It was the first no hitter by a cardinal rookie since Paul Dean no hit Brooklyn 3 0 in 1934. And then brother Dizzy threw a one hitter the day before that. And that prompted Diz to say if I knew my brother Paul was going to throw a no hitter I would have thrown one myself yesterday. <laughs> and Jose got one last night. And even Mark McGuire was saying what well, was he a different pitcher because he came in with an ERA that was near seven yeah, six point six nine ERA he throws a no hitter that surprised a lot of people. Well Anderson has fallen behind the count three balls one strike. It's been left handers that have torched him this year. Lefties are hitting 475. And that is one reason that Tony La Russa was not afraid to pencil Ray Langford in the number four spot. Usually he'll bat fifth or sixth against the south ball. Well Tony La Russa has the same information we do of course before the ball game and there's a guy right there the manager of the Cardinals who gets a lot more information his coaches kind of help him along and he makes up the lineup left handers have hurt Brian Anderson this year. Tony won his 1600th game last night he'll remember that with the no hitter Anderson has fought back against Langford three and two and it's hit back up the middle backhanded by Womack his throw to first is just in time ending the inning. We head to the bottom of the first Womack Gilkey and Luis Gonzalez are coming up. He has eaten his pizza right down to the Rhine 
He looked over his little brother who has a great cap on. And he's sticking his <laughs> tongue out at us, too. <laughs> Let's check out the Arizona Diamondbacks lineup. Here in the bottom of the first inning, Tony Womack will lead things off. He'll be followed by Bernard Gilkey and then Luis Gonzalez. What a great season Luis has had with 31 multi-hit games. Matt Williams hits fourth. Tenth year with 20-plus home runs. Great leader in that clubhouse as well. Steve Finley is the center fielder. And first base, Travis Lee, who has always been hot in June, just like last year when he hit 336. Kelly Stinnett is the catcher. Andy Fox bats eighth. And Brian Anderson will hit ninth. And here's Kent Bottenfield. 30 years old. And finally, a strong starting pitcher in the big leagues. The year he has had, as he has already won 11 games, going for number 12. ERA is excellent. Any any ERA I think nowadays under four is an excellent ERA. Same hits as inning pitch. He walks about four people a game. 72 strikes outs. Here's a guy that just knows how to pitch. Doesn't get himself into too much trouble and lets the team score some runs for him. He has said it himself. I'm no ace. I'm not fooling anybody. I just feel I can pitch good enough to keep us in the ball game. This is how he described himself as a pitcher. Well the game starts very similarly by both Brian Anderson and Ken Bottenfield, they both strike out their leadoff man on three pitches. Here's two guys that are starting tonight that both know a little bit about how to pitch. Bottenfield, four pitch pitcher. He's a pitcher, not a thrower. He is very big on watching videotape of other players when they're up at the plate to give him a better idea of how he is going to pitch to them. Matter of fact, there were several guys in that clubhouse, his teammates, who said the same thing. They said the number one area of growth this year has he's been a constant workhorse with videotape looking for tendencies of opponents. Well, he now faces Bernard Gilkey. Baseball teams normally will travel with a video coordinator. There's all kinds of information on tape. And if he wants to look at the Cardinal lineup, he can see them against many different pitchers to find out exactly what he is going to do against them. Well, he attacks with a fastball and a nice play by the third baseman. And David Howard throws out Gilkey. Fernando Tatis is just rejoining the team. He had gone back home for personal reasons. He's at third base, replaced by David Howard. Renteria is the shortstop. Joe McEwing has played every position but pitcher and catcher and was playing catcher in the instructional league to learn that position. Mark McGuire's at first base, and you see the outfield of Lankford, Bragg, and Howard. There's Joe McEwing. Three errors and 252 chances at second base. And here's a guy who has played parts of four seasons in double A, not just the minor leagues, but double A. I mean, everybody talked about J.D. Drew being the leading candidate to win Rookie of the Year this season for the Cardinals, but it might be another Cardinal. Here's Luis Gonzalez, who has some votes already for MVP. And the funny thing about McEwing is that he was not scheduled, of course, to be the second baseman to start the season. David Howard was scheduled to be the second baseman, and when he got hurt, McEwing got his chance, and he hasn't given it up. Look at that play by shortstop Edgar Renteria. And he gets his man, Luis Gonzalez, by a whisker. We head to the second inning. Brian Anderson will face Thomas Howard, Edgar Renteria, and Eli Marrero. Thomas Howard had the game winning two out hit last night. That beat Randy Johnson 1 0. As the rookie Jimenez outdueled Randy Johnson. Johnson struck out 14, gave up one run, and couldn't win the ball game because his opposing pitcher pitched a no hitter. Anderson just misses 2 and 1. What's ironic about that is that if St. Louis did not score in the top of the ninth inning and he threw a no hitter in the bottom of that. I don't believe it counts as a no hitter. No. He, he would have to go to the tenth inning if St. Louis scored to get the no hitter. It would go on the record book somewhere perhaps but not as a no hitter. The game was not over. So that two out base hit saved him in a couple of ways. 
There's a strike. And Brian Anderson has his second strikeout in this game. Well, Edgar Renteria will come to the plate as a hitter, but as a defender, how about his play to end that first? Well, not only was it a great play, but he got Gonzalez, who's hitting from the left side and who does not have that bad of speed. And look at this dive. He knows he's got to get up and throw in a hurry and gets him by about a step. Well, that's a great play. So here he is, the hero of the 1997 World Series win by the Florida Marlins, where he was their shortstop and came up with the game winning hit in the final game. He's always been a strong fielder, but Florida really felt that he let himself down, that he did not sustain the same intensity that he had as a youngster growing up in the minor leagues. Now he's gone with St. Louis, and they say that's a fair ball. Renteria did not agree, and he's angry, but it stayed fair right over that bag. And of course, if you're a first baseman and the play's in front of you, you go get that ball if you think it's a fair ball. There's Travis Lee. <laughs> Bounces right over the base, and look at the umpire. Fair ball. That's Wally Bell, the first base umpire behind home plate tonight. Jeff Nelson. Mark Wegner is at second, and Bruce Fremming at third. And here is number seven hitter Eli Marrero. Eli's been a great store. He's been sharing the catching responsibilities with Alberto Castillo. But Eli's got pretty good power with six home runs. And they expected him to have a great year last year, but. Eli had cancer in the thyroid gland and he was out until the All-Star break and never really recovered to have the, the kind of season they expected him to have. Popped him up, foul territory and not enough room for Stanett. Well, anytime you have a disease like that, of course you're gonna have to go through radiation therapy, and of course that takes a tremendous amount of strength away from you. And to come back at all from an injury like that in the same year, I think, is asking a whole lot. I mean, you hear the stories now about Andres Galarraga. His disease has almost been beaten, but they still don't think he's going to be back this year for the simple reason that he has been weakened by the serious treatments that he's had to go through to rid himself of this disease. But Marrero has fought it off, and they really love his futures. As a matter of fact, Tony LaRusso feels he has two of the finest young defensive catchers in the game of Marrero and Castillo both can really throw. Marrero pops it up. Right side. Finley calls off Gilkey and it is Steve to make the catch a one two three inning for Brian Anderson. We will see Matt Williams Mr. Finley and Travis Lee when we come back. It's a great thing to do on a Saturday night. Bring the kids down to the ballpark, and they've got 45,000 plus fans here tonight in game three of this series between St. Louis and Arizona. Here he is, one of the stars of the Diamondbacks, Matt Williams, already with 68 RBIs that leads the National League in 20 home runs. I mean, he is just three RBIs shy of having the same total he had all of last year. Matt calls time. It was Matt's first season back in the National League after a year with Cleveland. Came here and asked to be traded here to be with his family. Bottom field comes inside, one ball and no strikes. And after suffering really a rough year last year, only hitting 267. Hitting 20 home runs. He's already reached that total this year. He's really putting on a marvelous display, and he has upped his numbers in every single category. You know, I think there were some people who said he's on his way down a little bit after a tough year last year, but look what he's done this year. First in RBIs, extra base hits, top 10 in hitting. I mean, he has had himself a tremendous year, and I think it justifies the kind of contract he got. On top of all that, pretty good player to have on your club chemistry wise. He's still only 33. Seems like he's been around forever, but he broke into the big leagues at the age of 21. And he was on that Triple A Major League roller coaster, it seemed like, for about three seasons because he would come up and struggle, go back down, just tear up Triple A. Send him up, breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, off speed pitch, away, away, away. <laughs> 
finally left that alone and made him come to him. And he has hit a lot of home runs. Two balls and two strikes. And Williams with a ground ball. Renteria, long throw, not this time. It will be a single and probably a throwing area on Renteria. I think a high throw. I don't know if the throw was going to get him. He makes a nice catch, number one. And you've got McGuire at first base, who is 6'5, I believe. Once the ball gets by the third baseman, David Howard, this becomes a very tough play. He stops and throws, but he just throws a little too much on the ball. Up the ladder and down, the ball bounces. Once he throws it, goes into the dugout here. Well, it hit the top of the dugout, but that is out of play. So first base umpire Wally Bell immediately pointed to second base and said, take one more. And there is Williams in scoring position with nobody out in the second inning. Now Steve Finley checks his swing, loops it to left, and that's a foul ball. Just barely. Sometimes those check swings can be a hitter's best friend. Of course, anytime a hitter says he's hit the ball well, these things have a tendency to fall in. This one drops foul by less than a foot. You get one of those as a hitter, you're saying to yourself, boy, I'm in for a good <laughs> run here. And Steve has been lately. And then the next time he gets it, it's a line drive to somebody who says, I, I, can't, I can't catch a break. <laughs> I cannot catch a break. It all evens out in the end. Chopped off his foot. Now it looked like on that swing he was trying to do the correct thing. Try to hit that ground ball to the right side. Of course that check swing little fly ball. Just one of those excuse me type of situations. Proper baseball here. Get the runner over to third base. And these are the little things you have to do. If you want to be successful over the 162 game schedule. You got to do the little things against the good pitchers. And Botton Field one of the good pitchers this year. He'll work him away. And he'll strike him out in a fastball on the outside corner. And he's not happy at all with this call. You can see it on the face. You can see it in the, uh, the words, he's saying the ball is outside. Notice how that ball had a little right to or left to right movement on. It. That's turn that pitch. turn that ball over just a little bit, and of course, Bottenfield is saying to himself. I've got this guy in a hole now. He's going to have to hit my pitch. And if he wants to hit a ground ball, he's going to have to really get his wrist turned over on this. Now Kent will face Travis Lee. He leads the Diamondbacks in walks. And that is what is unusual. And I say that because he's such a young player. Most guys who are Travis Lee's age, and he's only 24, don't have that kind of plate discipline. Off speed pitch, driven and high in the air. Deep to right center. Darren Bragg makes the catch, tagging at second, Matt Williams, and he will reach third. Well, tonight after the game on the East, it's outrageous comedy with In Living Color. On the West, it's Penn and Teller, followed by Mission of Justice at 11 and In Living Color at 1. It's all here on FX. Steve Fizia, Ken Brett with you. And that's exactly why Steve Finley wanted to get Matt Williams to third because that fly ball scores Matt and Arizona would have a one nothing lead yeah, instead two outs. Here's Kelly Stinnett. If you look back on the ball game if it turns out to be a one run game in either direction that could turn out to be a big part of the ball game. Time will tell. Breaking ball misses outside. One of the things that Bottenfield worked on in spring training this year, which has made him a better pitcher, he worked on improving the slider. That last pitch was the slider. The old fashioned slider, the one that breaks about six inches. Tight spinning pitch. And there it is again.
Now Kelly calls time. He was about ready to dig in. Bottenfield was ready to bring it home, and Kelly raised his hand. He has started off Stinnett with two straight sliders. They come back with here. Williams at third. Comes back with a third. It is three balls and no strikes. Number seven hitter Kelly Stinnett with Andy Fox on deck. 11 wins for Bottenfield, 11 for Jose Lima. And then Schilling and Bird of the Phillies have 10 each. These are our Toyota leaders. The Phillies winning again today. I mean, they're really playing good baseball. Philadelphia at 39 and 33, six games over 500. And very close in the race with the Atlanta Braves leading the National League East. And a lot of people thought that Schilling was going to win his 15 to 20 ball games this year. Right now, the Phillies, two of the best pitchers in the National League with Bird. That surprised a lot of people. Well, here's the kid, Andy Schott, Andy Fox. When they traded Tony Batista, they said, Andy, the job right now is yours. Fouled off. He is a big, rangy shortstop. But a guy that Buck Showalter had in the New York Yankee organization, and he liked his makeup. I think that's one of the things that Arizona has done a very good job on. When it, when you talk about some of the people that they have signed to long-term deals, they feel they've got some real quality people, which helps them in the bench, in the locker room, and of course they play as a team. Bottomfield just threw that one right by Andy Fox. You know what he did? He went out and he not only talked to other general managers and other coaches, he talked to equipment managers, clubhouse young men. He wanted to know how are these guys treating other people in the clubhouse? Are they not only good baseball players, but good people as well? Some people can be nasty in the locker room <laughs> and nice on the field. <laughs> Now I thought that was a waste pitch right there a little fastball high and away. Let's see what he tries to do here one and two. Here's a guy that knows what he's doing on the mound. Pitch before that fastball out of the strike zone has him swinging and missing. This is the pitch he wants to get him on right here. Fastball outside corner strike three. Oh Bottenfield has. Just demanded both sides of the plate, and he has gotten them early with three strikeouts, all looking. Cardinals and Diamondbacks looking for the first run as we head to the third inning, and Ken Bottenfield will be one of the hitters. Cardinals are hoping they can get around to Mark McGuire. Well, Cincinnati with a win beat Houston eight to one, so Cincinnati is only one game behind the Astros for the National League Central lead. Philadelphia over Chicago six to two. Those fills are so hot. Florida nine three winners over Montreal. It is the Atlanta Braves taking the New York Mets seven to two. So Atlanta's lead over the Mets is now three games in the East. Dodgers beat San Francisco. And that's why Arizona's lead is now two and a half in the National League West over the Giants and the Dodgers right there with the Rockies. Here's David Howard just came off the disabled list Wednesday with a left hamstring problem and Brian Anderson that might be his strikeout pitch that change up. he's got a good one he's got a very good change up for Brian to be successful he's got to spot that ball in the outside corner which he usually does a very good job of because he's got great control he's still got to come inside which he is not afraid to do he's a much better pitcher when he pitches ahead well he catches that outside corner it's now one and two his way Brian has given up one hit in two innings is the only base runner he's one of the best control pitchers in baseball was number one in the National League last year. Just misses two balls and two strikes. Howard last year walked only 24 batters or rather Anderson 24 batters in 208 innings one per nine innings. Popped him up. Tony Womack for the first out. FX Baseball Saturday Night continues next week with an American League West Division showdown as Junior and the M's takes on 
Pudge one and the Rangers Mariners versus Rangers next Saturday at 830 Eastern 530 Pacific on FX. And we welcome you back to Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix Arizona. Ryan Anderson now facing his pitching counterpart Kent Botfield. Kent has five hits this year in 29 ABs. Now you know what his nickname is don't you I think I told you before the ball game Haas. They call him Haas. He's got a picture of Dan Blocker from the old Cartwrights <laughs> in his locker. And he's a big fella. <laughs> Made a lot of horses swaybacks. But here's a guy who was a football, basketball, baseball star growing up. Growing up in Portland, Oregon, went to James Madison High School. Anderson throws away, and it is fouled off. One ball, two strikes. That's not a bad hero to have. Haas was nice to everyone. Haas was a nice fellow. Didn't like it, you know, as big as as big as he was, he did not like to to mix it up with people. Good pitch by Brian Anderson. And Haas is gone. Mr. Cartwright is taking him back to the ranch. <laughs> Seattle beat Texas today 5 4. Texas with the lead in the American League West. And it is Boston. They gave Pedro 17 runs. So Mr. Martinez. They gave him 11 in the first, which was probably <laughs> enough. The Yankees win over Baltimore 7 to 4. So the Yanks hold on to their lead over Boston by one game in the East. Minnesota beats Detroit 1 0. And there's a strike at the outside corner. Tampa Bay over Toronto 5 to 2. Anderson, who's not known as a strikeout pitcher, already has three. And here's Joe McEwing, his first victim. Now Anderson mainly was a fastball changeup pitcher as a reliever. They've gotten him to trust his slider more. He used to be a curveball guy, but has gone more with the slider. I think one of the reasons he quit throwing all his pitches was he wasn't being used a whole lot. When you, when you, when you don't get regular work. Look at that changeup. Quite often you lose that third and the fourth pitch. You just don't throw them as often because you don't have as much confidence. And you're not in games long enough. Now look at how far out in front he is in this changeup. Way out in front. There goes the back foot. But not keep the weight back. Brian Anderson was sent to the minor leagues this year just to get some work in in preparation for coming back to the big leagues as a starter. There's a base hit back up the middle. So Ewing's at great season continues, and his hit streak is now at 18 in a row. Joe McEwing, what a story! They wanted this ball inside. He gets it outside over the plate, and right back through the middle. Ewing might be going. He has attempted nine steals this year. He's been successful five times. Well, the hitting record is Johnny Mize in 1936 by a Cardinal rookie. 22 in a row. So Joe is four shy of that. The kind of storybook season he's having, he'll probably get it. The one thing he's reminding himself this year is he's saying, I want to remind myself that I'm having fun, that baseball is fun. That have worked so far to reach my dream, and here I am. I'm having a good year, but don't deny yourself a smile on your face. Yeah, you got to have fun. I mean, here's a guy that spent three years at Double A. Double A is not as much fun, especially when you go back for the third time, because you begin to ask yourself, you know, am I in the right job? Am I doing the right thing? You know, for my living. But if I love the game and I continue to work hard, is it going to work out? Well, in this guy's case, it worked out, and he's sure taken advantage of it. I hope he's having fun. Right now, he's not enjoying the pickoff move of Brian Anderson. He has not gotten a good read on him, and Anderson has a great pickoff move. He's coming home this time, and McEwing did not get a good lead from first base. Last year, Anderson picked off 12 base runners. I believe he was also called for several box. Six yeah. led the league. Six box, which means that sometimes he gets in that lighter area where some umpires have a tendency to call a box, other umpires do not. 
And that's sometimes one of the things that pitchers struggle with. McEwing goes and Bragg swings and lifts it in the air to center field. Steve Finley says he has it. He does, ending the inning. So Anderson is working on a two hitter through three. And we are looking for our first run. Total hits in this game two by the Cardinals, one by the Diamondbacks. And both of these pitchers through two innings were mirror images of each other. There's a pool in right center field. It is the only ballpark in the major league where you can not only come to the yard and watch some good baseball, but you can kind of kick back and have a cold one and sit in a big old bathtub, you sit bring there. your own soap, soap on a rope. You can sit in there from the time the gates open until the time the game is over, which could be about five hours. And you would be very wrinkled at the end. <laughs> Well, here is Anderson He's talking about these guys. Their first two innings, each pitcher threw 27 pitches. And Anderson has it go under the glove of Mark McGuire to the second baseman, McEwing. Bottenfield tried to cover. And Anderson safe. An error by Big Mac. McGuire shaking his head there. That's an easy, easy play for Mark McGuire. Watch this. I mean, just goes right under the glove. Now the second baseman Ewing backs it up but look who's late covering first base and I think the reason that Bottenfield is a little late covering first is this is an easy three unassisted put out and by the time Bottenfield gets it gets it going again Anderson beats him to the bag. So that is the second error by the St. Louis Cardinals in this game the other by Edgar Renteria and now Tony Womack comes to the plate and he'll try and bunt and bunts it foul. It's one area of the game that Tony has really worked on. Buck Showalter was praising his efforts, hearing stories about his work in Pittsburgh where he made himself into a good hitter. And that's only Mark McGuire's second error of the entire year. And I say that about Womack because it was in Pittsburgh where when he came up he learned to hit on top of the baseball learn how to bunt because he would have been a career minor leaguer had he not used his speed better. Well he learned how to bunt of course they have of course AstroTurf there. And that's the kind of hitter you want your leadoff hitter to be in Pittsburgh. Well Womack goes in the air and sends it high to Thomas Howard for the first out of the bottom of the third inning. I don't think you want your leadoff hitter on AstroTurf learning how to hit the ball in the air especially a guy with great speed. When you hit the ball on the ground, it's not slowing down with grass. So Anderson remains at first base, and here is Bernard Gilkey. Bernard now 32. He is from St. Louis. He's a non drafted free agent by the Cardinals way back in 84. He went to University City High School. There is a breaking ball in the outside corner for strike one. But Gilkey had a great year with the New York Mets three years ago in 96 when he hit 30 home runs, drove in 117, but has not been able to regain those numbers since. I was under the impression that last year in New York he was in a little bit of trouble with the manager. And I think that there were some bad feelings, and I think he was very happy to get out of New York and come and start over again. Two balls, one strike by Bottenfield. As a pitcher, Ken, I would imagine you really respect and enjoy these kinds of stories about a guy who has made himself into a good pitcher. I mean, look at that pitch right there. Two and one. Did he give it? Did he come into the hitter? Threw him that little slider. Where was it? Outside corner at the knees. That's that's the sign of a pitcher. Let's see if he comes inside here. Yep, they're coming in. And look at that. It backs off the plate. And that ball's probably six inches off the plate inside. And what is the batter doing? He's backing off the pitch. Maybe thinking I'm going to go outside and try to lean in here. He's one of the outstanding pitching coaches in baseball. He's been with Tony La Russa since 1986 with the Oakland Athletics when they won three straight American League championships and one World Series. With a strikeout, they try and throw him out at second base, but Brian Anderson not only has a steal, he's going to third.
Well, he's done something there that I never did when I played my whole life. He stole himself a base. <laughs> pretty good example of a pretty good athlete. Anderson is a pretty good athlete. They got him running here, three, two. Now, a good throw is going to get him. But he fires one into center field. Look at the slide. Pops right up, goes into third. So Eli Marrero has the air. We were talking how great his arm was, and there is Brian Anderson at third base because of his mistake. Well, I'm, I'm very, very jealous of Brian Anderson right now. <laughs> that speed. Well, here's Luis Gonzalez, the very dangerous outfielder, hitting 369, routed out, was robbed of a base hit, and a fabulous play by Edgar Renteria. Yeah, being in California, I had heard so many stories about the great hitting Brett Brothers. And there are several people I've run into who said Ken was actually a better hitter than George. I asked you one time, could you have been an outfielder in the major leagues? And you said, no, because I didn't have speed. There's a line drive that is cut down by Thomas Howard for the final out of the inning. But Brian Anderson has a major league high. One more stolen base than my partner. Cardinal fans in Diamondback country finishing their dinner and they came to see Big Mac Mark McGuire will lead things off he had a 452 foot home run in game one of this series back on Thursday he has 23 home runs this year and has hit four in the last week the one problem he has had this year is hitting against left handers. Mark only has seven hits and 48 at bats this year and you think well, you'd see the ball a little longer coming out of South Paul's hand but no he's done a lot more greater damage against righties in his career than he has lefties. Ball one. One thing you can't do if you're Brian Anderson Brian has had good luck in this ball game tonight he's pitched three innings given up two hits don't do anything different to McGuire pitch him the same way you normally would. Don't try to get too cute early in the count and then have to come in. And now he's behind 2 and 0. Oh. Well, Big Mac came up. He and Jose Canseco were the Bash brothers of the Bay Area. They're making headlines together again. Jose hit number 28 last night. McGuire has 23. The flash bulbs go crazy at the ballpark. And Phoenix again as soon as he steps to the plate. And he takes outside ball four. You know, I would think that would be distracting, but it sure wasn't last year when he hit 70. Well, the, you, you recall, and I, I, I know we did games last year, you know, let down the stretch, a lot of St. Louis games, and every time he came to the plate, I mean, the flash bulbs, I mean, you thought you were doing, uh, you, you, you thought it was like the 4th of July. Well, Mac is walking to the dugout. He had 162 walks last season, 27 intentional, and we talked about it last about that. What I did, I did with 162 walks. Uh, I was pretty patient, I, and I've always been a patient hitter, but uh, I couldn't imagine walking 162 times, but I did. Um, I accepted it. You know, I have to, you, you got to take what's given to you, and I didn't see a lot of strikes to hit, but most of the time when I saw a strike to hit, I, I capitalized on it. Well, Mark McGuire took himself out of the game, obviously injured himself. He was limping slightly back to the dugout, and Willie McGee will take over for him. So the ageless wonder, now in his 18th big league season, Willie McGee digs in. And they pick him off immediately. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, that's not funny. He had a bad lead in first base. He didn't think anybody was going to throw over there. He had no chance. Watch this. I mean, look at this. He, he got his hands on his knees. Look at this. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to get loose. You know, you're talking about all that experience. The guy who's played so much baseball, seen so many moves, and he just fell asleep at first base. Really? And you go in for McGuire and you get picked off. Well, here's Ray Langford. You know, all that talk about McGuire's great year last season, we failed to realize that this guy had a terrific year as well. 
and he didn't even hit half the home runs as Big Mac. But a season with 31 home runs and 105 RBIs is pretty terrific. That time Anderson dropped down and threw him a sidearm fastball. And that's not something I re recall seeing Brian Anderson do several years ago when he was with the Angels. Just trying to get a little tricky here, a little different angle. Ground ball hit to second. Tony Womack has it. Two outs. By the way, we are trying to gather that information on why Mark McGuire took himself out of the game after walking to lead off his fourth inning. McGuire went straight to the clubhouse. And we will get it from the St. Louis clubhouse here in Phoenix. So two outs in a fourth inning. And Willie's saying, what happened? <laughs> Now Thomas Howard struck out looking his first time up. Well you were a lefty what kind of move did you have. You know it's funny I think once you once you have I, I had a pretty good move and I used to remember I used to recall being on the mound and having certain umpires that you knew that you could get a little more away with as far as stepping more toward the plate going to first and I picked off a bunch of guys one year I think I picked off 12 13 one wow. year. Next year you pick off two or three because the word gets out. And you get more box the next year because you're trying harder to pick people off. Because you've got the reputation you've got to live up to it. Yeah. People say he's got a good move watch him and so therefore but consequently they don't run on you as a result. You're a little more stable at first base. I remember Ron Fairley who played with Sandy Koufax saying that Sandy had a terrible move but he said it was because he never had a chance to work on it because nobody ever got to first base. That ball is popped up. Center field. Long run for Steve Finley. He will get there for the final out. We head to the bottom of the fourth here in Phoenix. No score with Arizona and St. Louis. It's an FX baseball Saturday night here in Phoenix Arizona at Bank One Ballpark. Steve Fiziak along with Ken Brett the good old left hander is quite a hitter and pitcher with a two almost no hitters in his career. We've got to chronicle those. It is the Cardinals and Diamondbacks and Jose Jimenez no hit Arizona last night and they still haven't scored. You know it's funny in the Arizona notes tonight they say the uh, Diamondbacks 235 game hitting streak was finally ended. <laughs> First no hitter ever thrown against him. Williams goes after the 2 0 pitch and fouls it off. The new first baseman, Willie McGee, again, Mark McGuire took himself out of the game. Apparently, it is a sprained ankle that happened yesterday, and Mark did not have to take batting practice early in the game because St. Louis had shut theirs down. So he came out to test it and went three innings and then uh, could not continue. It is the second game of his 18 year major league career at first base for Willie McGee. Take a look at this glove. Hold it right there. Look at this glove right here. Well that's where it was but that is not a first baseman's glove. That's an outfielder's glove. You know he doesn't play a lot of first base. Use a glove that you're more comfortable with and that's why he's using that. You do not have to use the old trapper's glove at first base. Use whatever you feel comfortable with. There's the trapper's glove. And he's ready. Got that outfielder's glove. Just catch the baseball. Make sure your foot's on the bag. Now the 2 2 pitch to Matt Williams. And he did not throw him anything straight, took a little something off, dropped down to about 81 miles an hour, and strikes out Matt Williams. Pretty good example of a pitcher right here. Where's the ball down and away? Most hitters have trouble with that pitch. And on top of that, he took something off the pitch and out in front of it. Was Matt Williams? The bottom field has gone just three and a third innings and already has struck out five, but that isn't even close to his best performance in strikeouts this year. 
He struck out a career high 10 in only five and a third innings against Pittsburgh when he beat the Pirates earlier this year, four to two. Here's Steve Finley. Straight change right there. He's got all four pitches fastball, curveball, slider, change up. Three that I've seen most effective tonight the fastball, the slider, and that change up. That was an outstanding pitch right there. The key, of course, to the changeup, the motion. Give the hitter the same motion. Comes right back inside. He struck out Steve Finley with Matt Williams at second base. And Finley has championship experience. The Diamond Packs. The Padres losing Finley, Caminiti, Vaughn, and Brown. Finley just rips it foul. Well, Bottenfield has set him up inside. Let's see if he goes back away from the left hander, Steve Finley. He does, and Steve just taps it to the shortstop. Brent Correa one hands and throws him out. And two gone here in the fourth inning. Pretty good example tonight of pretty good pitching on the part of both starting pitchers. I mean, they're moving the ball in, they're moving the ball out. They're pitching high, they're pitching low, and they're changing speeds. These guys are both excellent pitchers. They know what they're doing out there. And it's not the fact that you have to throw 93, 94 miles an hour in order to be successful at this level. You're better off not throwing so hard, changing speeds, and moving the ball around. That is what pitching is all about. Here is 24 year old Travis Lee. Grew up in the Seattle area, went to college at San Diego State, All American there, and he takes a fastball right down the heart of the plate. Strike one. I think he's going to be just. A brilliant baseball player. I think he's going to be a future all star for these Diamondbacks. Does everything well, has pretty good pop, always hits for a high average, has good speed, already 10 stolen bases this year. But it's his plate discipline, the number of times he walks, and he's already a, a hero here in Phoenix. You look back on Travis Lee and what he's done at the major league level and the minor league level. He only played one year in the minor leagues, played 61 games at Class A, and then he played 59 at Triple A, and then right to the big leagues. A short stay at the lower level. Lee lifts it in the air, left field, Ray Lankford, and that does it for four innings. Scoreless game here in Phoenix, Arizona, St. Louis, and the Diamondbacks. Trying to find a seat in the front row here at Bank One Ballpark, Phoenix, Arizona. I must be in the front row. Remember yes. that? Bob you oh, what, what. One of the great comedians, great baseball broadcasters with the Milwaukee Brewers. And now Brian Anderson, a left-hander, will deliver to the leadoff man for the St. Louis Cardinals, Edgar Renteria, in this fifth inning. It'll be Edgar Renteria, Eli Marrero, and David Howard. Renteria grounded out his first time, but look what he's done the last six games. Ten for 17. And he throws a fastball up high. That fastball was right over the middle plate and high. And what did the hitter do? The hitter raised his hands up as if to back away from the pitch. Why? Because they're starting to lean out over the plate. Here's that fastball inside. There's a good punt. Matt Williams. Oh, what a play. Everybody thinks of Matt Williams as being a great offensive player, which he is. You know, he struggled last year, I think, more more of an indication of what he can do this year, but he's also very good at third base. Look at that. Takes the one step, good throw. You know, he makes it look like it is so easy. Yeah, that's because he's done it thousands of times. I know. They come out and they work and they work and they work on that until they get it just right. On a play like that, you just grab the baseball. Can you find the seams? Because they always tell you to go across the seams. You don't have that kind of time. No, you don't really, a lot of times you don't have the time to find the seams. You just get it and throw it. 
Another bunt try this they're, time they're by working. Eli Marrero. They're, they're working, working on them, aren't they? You know, and you talk with the hitters around the National League and the American League, and for years you say, who do you least like to bunt on? And it's Williams and Tim Wallach's name would always come up as well. Wallach and Matt Williams were the two toughest third basemen to bunt on. Mm -hmm. Good fielders. Williams just dominated that gold glove into the National League and Ken Caminiti who was outstanding with Houston and then with San Diego couldn't win a gold glove until Matt went to Cleveland. And then sometimes when 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 Williams goes to Cleveland and somebody else wins it then it's tough to win it back from him yeah. even though Williams is back in the National League gold gloves have a tendency to stay home. <laughs> You win it it's like Pudge, Pudge Rodriguez wins it every year. Now they have a, a guy catching for the uh, Baltimore Orioles named Johnson, who's a pretty good catcher. I don't think he's got a prayer no. to get a gold glove. That ball popped up. Kelly Stinnett. And two outs. And there are a lot of people who think Johnson probably overall a better catcher than Pudge Rodriguez. Pudge Rodriguez has got a great reputation because he's got a cannon for an arm. But as far as blocking the ball, Catching the ball and calling a good ball game, probably not as good as Charles Johnson. And I'll give you good odds on who's going to win that gold glove this year. Rodriguez. That's where my money is. It's a good place to be. He has. And he's a fine out, catcher. Right? Don't get me wrong. He is a fine catcher. He's been throwing out 70% of would-be base stealers and this that's, year. And that's a most that's a very important stat to talk about when you're talking about catchers. When you think that 50% is considered great, what is 70%? 40% is very good. What is the major league average? 35? Probably 30 to 40. I think the Cardinal catchers this year have thrown out three in five, which is about 60%. David Howard. Waves of the changeup thrown by Brian Anderson. He is really quietly putting together an excellent evening. Brian has only allowed two hits to St. Louis, one by Darren Bragg in the first, and one by Joe McEwing in the third inning. She walked just one man, that was Mark McGuire. Here's that changeup again. And where did he hit that ball? Right off the very end of the bat, reaching out, lunging out to hit the ball. Is it time to go inside? Well, he's diving out over the plate. One and two count. Why not? Go inside if you're going to miss. Miss, miss six inches off the plate. Now let's watch and see where the catcher sets up. Not out there. Come on. Come inside. <laughs> I don't know how David held up because it was mighty close. I want to see him come in. I think one of the great things to see in baseball. Now this pitch is just outside. The ball kind of tailing just a little bit away. One of the great things to see is a pitcher that will throw the ball in. The hitter's going all the way from the pitch, and it's a call strike three. Up the middle, right to the shortstop, Andy Fox, and another one-two-three inning for the kid from Geneva, Ohio. Scoreless game in the bottom of the fifth inning between the Cardinals and Diamondbacks. Willie McGee is in for Mark McGuire. McGuire left with a left ankle sprain, and McGee finally found the right glove. He's got a first baseman's glove on. He came out with his outfielder's glove last inning. Now he's a player. They just needed to bond that first base glove, and he. This is only his second time playing first base in his 18-year career. Heavy button over there. You know that's not a bad idea. Kelly Stinnett is not. Kelly Stinnett's not the kind of guy you want to see bunt over there. Now, Fox, the next guy up. Andy Fox might try to run one down there. And Andy will be batting from the left side so he could drag one down that first base line. You talk about a bad scene over at first base. I'm I'm sure Willie and the pitcher <laughs> haven't done a whole lot of work on who's covering the bag over there. And Kent's working on a one hit shutout, so he doesn't want to go into the dugout and talk defense with Willie. Now look at the hitter back away from that pitch, and that pitch is not off the plate very far. 
And that's the kind of pitch I love to see. I love to see pitchers pitch inside, pitch inside aggressively. Came inside aggressively, and now he's in front of the count. One ball, two strikes. You know, Bottenfield, 29 and 30 lifetime. Last year, Bottenfield as a starter had an ERA of 4.4. He was 4 and 6 for St. Louis. He was both a starter and a reliever. Started 17 times. In fact, when you go back to spring training this year, Bottenfield was one of those guys, and Dave Duncan's the one who told me this, their pitching coach, who was kind of on the fence, depending on how Bennis was and 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 Osborne and Morris, three of their top starters, you know, he might have found himself a fourth or a fifth guy, might have found himself in the bullpen, but he's done a great job with the injuries that they have had to their starting rotation as a starter. Wow, that didn't miss by very much. Well, two balls and two strikes. I'd sure like to know where that one was. That sounded like a strike. Well, Kent kind of walked back to the top of the hill with his back turned to the home plate umpire Jeff Nelson as if to say, well, why couldn't I get that? That's got to be a strike. I mean, I'm just I'm going to disagree with that one. Came right back inside, only this time a little bit further in. It's fouled straight back. Botfield is trying to be the first Cardinal pitcher since 1985 and Joaquin Andujar to win a dozen games before the All Star break. Right now he is, or Joaquin was 13 and 3. Botfield is 11 and 3 and will get another start before the All Star break. Now he has been around the plate. He was ahead one and two, missed inside, foul ball, missed outside. Now it's three and two. Took a little something off. It's rolled down the third base line, rolling foul, and they'll try it again at three and two. There's David Howard, the third baseman, in for Fernando Tatis. Now I want I want you to look at this pitch again. Here's a 3-2 count on the catcher. Look where this pitch is. A slider just off the plate and the hitter is trying to protect the plate. This is not a pitcher folks who's giving in to the hitters. He continues to make good pitches at this time in the ball game to the number 7 hitter who's a catcher who doesn't run real well. Him up foul territory. Is there enough room? Well, I will say this: this is a pretty good battle between Botfield and Kelly Stinnett. Turned into a pretty good battle right here for the hitter. Ken. Kelly Stinnett has battled enough here where he gets a base on balls. He will have earned it. This will be the 11th pitch that Botfield will make. Kelly Stinnett. Kelly walked his first time. Oh, good at bat though. But Bottenfield comes into this game at 11 and 3, and there's a big question: Will Kent be invited to the All-Star game? We asked him about that. And I understand that, that it's a possibility. I also understand there's a lot of excellent player or pitchers right up there at the top in in different categories. I can't think about it, you know. I mean, I have to to an extent where you don't find out until the last minute, and so parents are trying to find some vacation time just in case it happens, and all that's nice, but, you know, it's a dream, but it's out of my hands. Other people make those decisions, and if it happens, great, and if not, I'm going to enjoy my three days at home in Indiana. Well, Ken Bottenfield certainly deserves to go. He's pitching great baseball tonight. Jose Lima, likely will go with Houston. Kurt Schilling, uh, Philadelphia. Chance for Paul Bird, Shane Reynolds. There's a line drive base hit to center field. Well, after that long workout on the 11 pitch at bat to Kelly Stinnett, Bottenfield working on a one hit shutout gives up his second hit to Andy Fox. Yeah, 11 pitches to one guy before he walks him. And then the first pitch, Andy Fox is looking at, goes right back up the middle. Fastball down and away. And now Brian Anderson up there being asked to bunt. Bunt situation. Brian saying, why me? Hey, I got on base my last time up. I even stole second base for you. Now, if you're Brian Anderson, I'm thinking bunt to first base. Why? Because Willie McGee's there? Yes, sir. He's a veteran of two games at first base in his 18-year career. 
Bunch of foul. McGee in there because of the ankle sprain to Mark McGuire. He suffered that yesterday. Played three innings of this game and took himself out. And we're talking about all star pitchers. Got to mention Randy Johnson and Kevin Brown. No balls, two strikes. Let's see if Buck Show Walter makes him bunt one more time. He's not done a very good job. Of bunting the ball. You know, when you bunt the ball, you want the barrel of the bat to be a little higher than the handle of the bat. That last bunt, he had the barrel below the handle. And if you have to get out and get the ball, just bend your knees a little bit. You're trying to make it out in this situation. Well, it has popped up, and they let it fall. They go to second base. They've got the force there, and oh my goodness, they wind up with the double play. Very nicely done by Kent Bottenfield. Yeah, we talked earlier in the ball game about how he is a pitcher. Some guys are just going to catch this ball and take the out. Now, if you're on second base in this situation, you can't go anywhere because you think the ball is going to be caught. You can't go halfway. He's going to throw you out. What a great play on the part of Bottenfield. He knows exactly what he's going to do. He's going to get the force in second. And now they're going to get the easy. Force out at third. Or the tag out at third. Well, that's a bright, bright play on the part of the Cardinals. How high does the ball have to be before the infield fly rule is in effect? Not that high. <laughs> I mean, that's that's some thinking out there. You know, when you're a pitcher, I would think the only thing in your mind is getting this guy out. He's thinking ahead. He's thinking I got to get guys in first and second. They not may not be ready. That's what not, what that, if he pops it up? That's not the kind of a play a pitcher's got to think about. That's the kind of a play he knows what he's going to do when the ball goes in the air. Well, he handled it beautifully. But how many times do we see the pitcher catch the pop up? Quite often. Yes. I'd say about half the time you would see a pitcher catch the ball right there. Fouled off. Now Bottenfield must face Tony Womack, who's been a very good ad as a speed hitter. But what is his hot zone? His hot zone is right here. Look at this. He likes that ball down there, middle of the plate, and then down and in. Get down the line, but foul. You see McGee aggressively go after that baseball? Well, that's the way he plays. You know, I, I'm not going to take anything away from I Willie know. McGee for playing first base. But if you have a man out there in a position like first who doesn't feel real comfortable, try to take advantage of it. Bunt the ball to him. And Womack has a lot of bunt base hits in his career, but with the count two and two, he will be swinging away. McGee holding the runner at first base. That's Brian Anderson, who stole a bag earlier in this game. Ryan does not go and the pitch is line foul. St. Louis came in with a record of 36 and 37. Tony LaRusso's team in fifth place in the National League Central. Six and a half games behind Houston. Houston lost today. Now the ground ball by Womack, the second baseman McEwing. And Tony is out. So is Arizona. And we head to the sixth inning looking for our first run. Remember that situation the last inning? Runners in first and second, nobody out. Let's listen in as Renee Latchman, the third base coach, was watching it from the dugout. You could hear Renee saying trap it trap it means that's the old baseball term let it drop pick it up make the play and that's exactly what the Haas man did right there Kent Bottenfield outstanding play two to four to six two to, five. Two to, to four to five yeah that's time to head to the corral the uh, <laughs> on deck circle for Haas he got teased by a little Joe and he's frowning. 
He's been pitching a great game, and he is a gentleman who really deserves to go to the All Star game. I mean, he could be 12 and 3 after tonight. So there's Rene from a baseball family. Marcel is a fine pitching coach with the Anaheim Angels. Brother Bill is a coach in the major leagues. Bottenfield trying to make it a one nothing game on one swing. Sometimes pitchers like this who have their first dominant year have a tendency not to make the all star team. But I think in this guy's case you have got to give him every benefit of the doubt due to the fact that he's won as many games as anybody in the league. I think he's got to be given serious consideration if he doesn't get it I would be a little surprised. Granted there are guys who are starters in the National League who are automatically going to be selected. But this guy deserves to be on that also. Little tapper Brian Anderson has it and he throws out Kent. Well this week on Baseball Thursday it's the Diamondbacks against the Cincinnati Reds next Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern 4 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Baseball Thursday also has the Tigers and Yankees. You've got your chance next Thursday at 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. So those are your choices. Yankees are really battling the Red Sox are first in the East. Boston won today 17 to 1 as Pedro Martinez won his 14th game most in the major leagues. But the Yankees also won 7 to 4. So New York's lead still one over Boston. Here Arizona has a lead in the National League West by two and a half games over San Francisco because the Giants lost to the Dodgers today. And Arizona if they win can take a three game lead in the West. Here's Joe McEwing. And he rattles it in the hole. Travis Lee is there. Anderson covers. Nicely done. Pretty nice play here on the part of number one, Travis Lee, who goes far to his right to make the play. And then Brian Anderson, who's pretty quick off the mound. Now watch Brian here. As soon as his ball is hit to the right side, watch him. I mean, you got to go hard to first base and get there in time to catch the ball. He's well ahead of the hitter. He gets to the bag, finds the base, and that's it. And that's a play they work on in spring training constantly. <laughs> and they should during the regular season as well. Yeah, we some, see them botched up a lot. Some teams during the regular season will have the pitchers come out an hour early and they'll go through fundamental drills just to keep it fresh in their mind. Now Anderson with two outs facing Darren Bragg. Brian pitching very well. His best start was this this year. It was about two weeks ago when he beat Florida four to three, going seven innings, giving up nine hits and two runs tonight. He has allowed only two hits and not a run, and he's got two outs in the sixth inning. Bragg takes it. One and two. If you go back and look at what Brian Anderson did last year for this club, last year he was 12 and 13, had a good ERA of 4.33 but I think more importantly he kept his team in a lot of ball games because in all the starts he made last year Arizona was 16 and 16. And this is a team that struggled last year. Drops down side on fools Bragg. Bragg very fortunate to top that baseball foul. And then what's Arizona do? I mean, here's a guy that, that, that wins 12 games for you last year. They go out and they sign Stottlemyre and Randy Johnson. He goes to spring training, the sixth starting pitcher. And he struggled this year because he didn't get a lot of time to get his work in. That's why they had to send him to the minor leagues for a while. He really fooled Bragg on that change of pace. It is lifted in the air left field. Gonzalez is there. And Anderson has just done a marvelous job shutting out St. Louis on two hits through six innings. Bottom of the sixth inning and Phoenix Arizona Bernard Gilkey will lead things off each team with two hits Botfield and Brian Anderson have just been excellent tonight. And Gilkey is over two he is grounded out and struck out against Kent. Gilkey hitting 310. Haven't Two balls seen, and no strikes. We have not seen him throw that many pitches that far off the strike zone. 
pitch that he walked Stanett on in the fifth inning was a pretty bad 3 2 pitch on the part of Botfield. I mean, normally tonight, I mean, 99% of his pitches, I mean, right around the plate, right there. Two and one. It has been dry in the desert the last 14 innings after being no hit by Jose Jimenez. They come back and they haven't scored in the first five innings tonight. They lead the National League in scoring at almost six runs per game. And, and Gilkey takes a strike. And they're going up against a pitching staff that has struggled in the National League. I mean, St. Louis, so last night they get a no hitter out of that guy. He still got the ball in his hand, I think. <laughs> and tonight, tonight, they're in the bottom of the sixth, yet to score again. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Jimenez was excellent last night. I mean, he was just throwing the ball with tremendous movement, and Bottenfield has been very impressive to both of us and all of these Arizona fans tonight. They were saying before the ball game today that, you know, Jimenez last night, his ball had Mark McGuire movement. Or, or Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown movement. I'm sorry for saying that. Yeah, Mark McGuire movement. There's a fastball that strikes out Gilkey. And it was Tony LaRusso who had said he had great movement on his ball. Well, last night that movement was very evident. He had Mark McGuire running into the clubhouse to look, check the videotape saying, hey, what's he doing? Because he wasn't throwing like that before. Mike Shannon, uh, broadcaster of the St. Louis Cardinals, was telling us in spring training, Jimenez was fabulous. His ball wasn't just moving, it was snapping at the end. He called, I think he used the word biting. He had a biting, yeah. biting pitch. Well, that one had a little light bite to it. It's one ball and one strike. Luis Gonzalez, his wife Christine, has a lot of work. Christine is on the left. She has triplets. Luis and his wife have triplets. One year old celebrating their birthday today, and Luis went out to stretch, and a fan reached over and gave him a huge card and a huge present that he had to take back in the clubhouse. Look at those kids. You know that is more than a handful because my idea of going to a baseball game is not taking care of three one year olds because there's no way you can do that and keep score. Well I tell you I have twins and they say twins are five times as bad as single children and triplets have got to be 15 times as bad. <laughs> I feel bad for that woman. I hope she's got plenty of help. Hey she's and, having fun though. And plenty of friends. She's still smiling. Luis on their birthday sends one foul. Gonzalez was robbed of a base hit on a beautiful play by Edgar Renteria in the first inning and fly to right field in his last at bat. Bonfield has struck out six. Coming inside, and he gets him to pop up on the infield. Kent has not missed too many of his spots. Inside, outside, change in speed. He really has pitched a good game. I think the only difference tonight in the way both of these pitchers are pitching is that Bottenfield's really using the inside half of the plate more. Anderson has had great success in his game tonight, staying primarily outside. Very impressed am I up to this point in Bottenfield. You know, and I had read about him. He says he's no ace. He just knows what he's doing. He thinks he's the kind of a guy who can keep his team in the game. And here his team has not scored a run. And what has he done? He's kept him right in the game. And there's a pretty good example right there of how to pitch. Not a great curveball, but just throw a little spinner up there. Most hitters aren't looking for something. A little off speed with a bend in it for strike one. You don't have to throw the A curveball on the first pitch. And then he backs off a little more, drops to 83 miles an hour, lo lowers the sight line to Matt Williams, and has the count his way, nothing in two. Oh, man, that was a tough pitch. He did not throw one ball straight to Matt Williams and strikes him out on three pitches. Please watch responsibly. Baseball Saturday on FX is brought to you by 10 10 220. Dial it and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. 
Steve Fiziak, Ken Brett with you at Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. A scoreless ball game. Brian Anderson has really thrown a gem. A two hit shutout as he heads to the seventh inning of play. And Brian throws that changeup that just does miss outside. One ball, no strikes. Willie McGee, Mark McGuire started and was 0 for 1, did walk, and as soon as he walked to first base, took himself out. McGee came in. McGee stood at first base, took the lead, and was picked off. Picked off immediately by Brian Anderson. Well, let's see what happens if he gets on base this time. <laughs> There's a strike, two and one. Anderson has always wanted to be a pitcher. I mean, his dad really involved growing up in Geneva, Ohio. His parents say they have home movies of him throwing a baseball with a full windup at the age of two. And he was a kid in high school who was only like 5'10, 155 pounds when he graduated. Nobody wanted him, so he had to go to small Wright State. Wound up being a first round pick. Ground ball up the middle. Andy Fox has it. Gets Willie McGee. Well, tomorrow it's Major Movie Sunday with Edward James Olmos and American Me at 5. Then Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen star in Wall Street at 7.30. Watch Major Movie Sunday tomorrow starting at 5 on FX. The Bob. Bank one ballpark. Everybody in town calls it the Bob. Where are you going? We told the driver today. We're going to Bob. <laughs> and he dropped us off at Robert Jones' house, a friend of his. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, here's Ray Langford. Langford 0 for 2, twice grounding out to the second baseman. See that good bend in that. Breaking ball thrown by Ryan Anderson. Misses two balls and no strikes. It's back fastball, and that is three to the second baseman. Only this time, Womack cannot pick it cleanly. And that is one reason, Ken, that the Pittsburgh Pirates, when he was with Pittsburgh, were thinking of moving him to the outfield. He was the second baseman last year. He's playing mainly right field. With Arizona. Yeah, and we still don't know really the reason why Jay Bell is not playing. You know, it could be just a night off. The little in between hop right here. The ball caught him in between hops, ran right up on him. So Lankford on with one out. Ray hasn't been running that much this year because of that left knee problem that held him back early in the season. Now Thomas Howard who won the game last night. Two out base hit. Beat Randy Johnson one nothing with Jose Jimenez throwing the no hitter. First rookie no hitter since Wilson Alvarez no hit Baltimore back in 1991. Well he is tough to read. Is it because of his front leg almost in a balk situation where do you have to go well as a left handed pitcher you're not supposed to bring your right leg behind the rubber if you bring it behind the rubber you have to go to the plate the best way to do it watch his leg here you bring it straight up and that's exactly what he does and that kind of freezes the runner at first base whereas some guys who bring their foot behind the rubber because that's normally the way they pitch they get penalized and I think that's a bad rule because you're taking something away from pitcher. But the umpires think you're trying to deceive the runner and they will call the buck. Line drive base hit left field. So after the error by Lankford or by the second baseman Womack that allowed Lankford to reach a single by Thomas Howard just a third hit off Brian Anderson in this evening's ball game. And St. Louis has something going in the seventh. So Thomas Howard, who gets the game-winning hit last night, gets a big hit here in this ball game tonight. Don't forget, we are still tied. There is no score, and he pulls that pitch, gets a little too much of the play, just a little dunker into left field. And I'm sure we're going to get some action. Yes, we do have action now in the Arizona bullpen. 
Brian Anderson has not made a lot of starts this year. Well he did go five and a third innings in his last start in a no decision in Monday's 10 inning 7 4 loss to Cincinnati and before that he beat Florida throwing seven innings and giving up nine hits. He has not thrown over 100 pitches yet. He's at 92 and has allowed three hits. He has the uh, right handed swinging Edgar Renteria and then Eli Marrero at the plate. Vicente Padilla has started a warm up with Arizona for Buck Walter. Well, he's turned a lot of ground ball outs in this game, and that's what he needs right here. Let's see if he works away with Renteria. He tries to get Renteria to reach and turn a ball over, tapping into a double play. He's a tough man to double, though. There is Padilla. You know, in a game as well pitched by this, you feel yourself. Not pulling for either team, but pulling for the pitchers. This is the third time in this inning Anderson has fallen behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes. Now, granted, the runner on second base is there due to an error, but he's fallen behind a little bit. This is the third time around the lineup. In there, two balls and one strike. I mean, both pitchers, Anderson and Botfield, have just pitched a whale of a game, thinking their way through it. Throwing the right pitches at the right time, confusing the hitters who might be thinking one way and they'll give them something different. Brian steps off. Good speed in the base pass with Langford at second, Howard at first. Double this guy, you need an atom ball. Ball hit right at the shortstop for second baseman. And he lines it just past Matt Williams. Here comes Lankford. They'll send him home. The throw to the plate is cut off, and Williams will run a man down for the second out. But St. Louis will take a 1 0 lead. The same score they won last night's game by. Falls behind Renteria has to come in once again the ball not hit real hard and he gets himself a base hit. Here's the pitch. Reaches out pulls that outside pitch just finds a hole past the diving Matt Williams. Gonzalez is going to come up. Langford run into the plate the ball is cut off at third and the runner trying to go from first to third there just easy out. Look at Matt gets right up he's got to get back in position as the cutoff man. He's going to make the out by himself. We talk about a game of inches. The ball gets by Williams by about three, four inches, and Lankford had about a uh, about an eight foot lead at second base with Womack moving in that direction. If he catches the ball, double play inning is over. Double play, and of course, this is a game of inches, as yeah. we all know. So a tough break for Brian Anderson. The error by Womack. And now Langford, who reached on that error, has come around to score. With one out, Tony could not handle the shot by Ray Langford, committed the error. Consecutive hits by Howard and Renteria. Two outs now, and there's a ground ball hit right back to Brian. He'll go to first, end the inning. Anderson with seven strong innings, but gives up his first run of the game, albeit unearned. Well, the Cardinals have taken a 1 0 lead. Renee Latchman had his arm spinning trying to get Ray Lankford home, and he did that successfully. Let's listen in to the play. Come on, come on, come on. You got to go hard, go hard, go hard. Yeah. And then he said, hey, where were you going, Thomas? Thomas Howard was cut down between second and third as Matt Williams cut the ball off from the outfield. Yeah, Langford is the guy that, that Latch is worried about right there. He's still shaking his head as to what was going on. In fact, he said, what is, what's going on here? Howard, I think, might have tried to force himself out between second and third to stop the throw from going to the plate, but I don't think Latch would agree with that. 
Well, now bottom of the seventh, Bottenfield with a one nothing lead, and he faces C. Finley to lead things off. Finn has struck out looking and grounded out. He's not done that well on this homestand. Just five hits in his last 30 at bats. Lowered the average to 270. He takes high. One and one. Ninety one pitches for Button Field. Nice two to one ratio. Strikes over ball. And that is rolled right to the first baseman, Willie McGee. He plays that position like he's been there all his life. Never felt more comfortable. Boy, he's at the ball against you pretty quick over here. <laughs> you don't even have to move the feet. Yeah. Willie took over at first base for Mark McGuire, who took himself out of the game after his third inning walk. McGuire turned an ankle. Yesterday and uh, thought he'd give it a go today and went just three innings before removing himself. Now Travis Lee and Lee tries to tie the game up with one swing to bat, lifts it in the air, right field, and Bottenfield has a quick first two outs here in the seventh inning. Well, Ken, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Kent Bottenfield nearing uncharted territory. There's a ground ball in the hole. Base hit left field by Kelly Stinnett. So Kelly's been on all three times with a pair of walks. And a single now. And the tying run is on. Go ahead, man. Comes to plate and Andy Fox. And of course, with Andy Fox, the number eight hitter due up. Brian Anderson is due up next after that, so you could see some moves being made here. And already David DeLucci is on the on-deck circle. I would think that would be it for Brian Anderson, who pitched one. Heck of a ball game, giving up an unearned run in the top of the seventh. Seven innings, four hits allowed, one unearned run. Bottenfield has just pitched just one run better. Some marvelous work tonight. He has two outs now. Stinnett just drove one into left field. Andy Fox, who has three home runs this year, has the count his way. And Andy flips a foul into the seats. One and one. Andy Fox from Sacramento, California. That's a good baseball city. A lot of major leaguers have come from Sacramento. Larry Boa, Steve Sachs, Joan London. That came from my uh, producer, Jim Zurich. I guess Joan London, who grew up in Sacramento, was an outstanding softball player. Yeah, Gray Davis is from Sacramento. I mean, maybe he plays a little bit. There you go. And there's Brian Anderson, who pitched a terrific game, who's from Ohio. The 2 1 pitch, and Andy rips it foul. Man, he turned on that one right now. I'm a, I'm a little surprised, Steve. We don't see anybody uh, anybody up throwing in the Arizona bullpen. Now I know we had Padilla throwing earlier, and he could indeed be well and be in the dugout already. But normally in a situation like this, even though it looks like Anderson is done, even though there are two outs, you would see somebody throwing and just come to the mound. So maybe indeed he is not coming out of the ball game if the third out is made. Here. Something to think about. Bonfield has struck out seven in the game. I was talking about uncharted territory earlier. His longest outing this year, eight innings. May 10th, a victory over Philadelphia. And he rips it to Willie McGee and the Gold Glover at first base. <laughs> Gold Glove wannabe, I should say, makes the catch. It's St. Louis by one here in Phoenix.
Top of the eighth inning, St. Louis and Tony Larusa with a one-nothing lead as Larusa goes for his 1,600 first career victory. Now Botfield against Anderson has just been a great matchup tonight. They've been so even, both throwing 99 pitches. Botfield has walked two. Anderson has walked one. Strikeouts different at seven to three. Look at the first pitch strikes, and of course that's the most important pitch to throw. Strike one. Both of them very good in that department. Both these guys have been great tonight. Brian stays in the game. He'll face David Howard, Kent Bottenfield, and Joe McEwing. Howard 0 for 2 has popped up and grounded out. And really the only walk that Anderson issued was that Mark McGuire. He may have been working around Big Mac, the damage that he has done to National League pitchers through the years. But he was a terrific. He's always been a control pitcher. Was not that big growing up in Geneva High School, and at 5'10", 155 pounds, you better have good control. Oh, look at that pitch! Matter of fact, he's a junior at Wright State, threw 95 innings and only had six walks. All American. Sometimes at the big league level, you can have too good a control. Sometimes you have to miss, and sometimes there are times when you have to walk people. Sometimes that's it. Sometimes that's a tough thing to tell a pitcher. Look at that change oh, up and down man. he goes. David Howard had no chance at all. Well, weeknights on FX, it's the X Show. Watch the new FX series for men and the women who put up with them. Catch the X Show Monday and every weeknight at 11 on FX. Men get bashed again. Tony LaRusa has really enjoyed watching this young left-handed throw. And now Ken Bottenfield rolls one down the left right field side. It twists and goes foul. Did you know Brian Anderson would paint a strike zone on the outside wall of his dad's tire business, which was next door to the family home, and he would practice throwing strikes exactly where he wanted to. And he, they said he had marks in certain areas. Over and over, just like throwing darts. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, there's probably lots of kids who used to paint the same thing on a wall somewhere in their backyard, or and that, that's just how you work out. He and his dad would listen to Cleveland Indians games on the radio, go outside, and just practice location. He's right back, there's a change if that's mean to your opposing pitcher. <laughs> But he's going for his fifth strike out of the game right here. Almost got it. Well, they moved it up 11 miles per hour. That's a good difference between a changeup and a fastball. All you want to do in a changeup is get the guy on his front foot. And then he backs off another 10, back to 78, and strikes out again. That is the fifth strikeout for Brian Anderson, his high this year. So he's over the 100 pitch mark. He came in to this inning with 99. He's now at 107 with two outs in the eighth inning. You know, Buck Showalter would love to get him a victory. And coming up in the bottom of the eighth inning, his spot to lead things off, a likely pinch hitter there, then Tony Womack, then Bernard Gilkey. Here's Joe McEwing. McEwing continued his hit streak to 18 straight games back in the third inning with a single up the middle. Surrounding that, a strikeout, ground out. Going down was working in instructional league, catching. He has had a long year. He, he had a, about 600 at bats in the minor leagues last year. Then he goes to instructional ball. Then he has 180 at bats. In winter league, and now he's had another full season. This kid's got to be worn out. He's only 170 pounds as it is. You know, he's found himself a home. All those positions he can play, and he finds finally finds himself a home in the big leagues, without having to bounce around a lot. But for him to learn how to catch, if it ever came to that point, only enhances his value to the club that he's on right now. Of course, that's being St. Louis, a super utility guy, a la Burke Campanaris. Little tapper, Anderson Field. Throws out Joe and a one two three inning nice job battling back for Brian Anderson in the eighth. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth with St. Louis holding a one nothing lead.
Mark McGuire may be out of the game but he still left his mark right there in the front row. I mean there's a reason fans come hours before the game they want to see McGuire take swings like this and watch where the ball goes right there and it smacks the light 502 feet from home plate. They never thought the restaurant sign was that close to home plate but McGuire showed them he can hit the ball farther. Yeah, that's just an incredible when you think about it and you stand at you stand at home plate or you stand right around the infield and you look how far that is it's just incredible that somebody can hit the ball that far. There's a base hit to right field by David DeLucci. He's pinch hitting for Brian Anderson. So Anderson will tip his cap to his teammate DeLucci who gets on base and that man represents the tying run. So Bottenfield has given up his fourth hit. Left hander Scott Radinsky is going to get loose as we're probably running near the end of the line even though Bottenfield has not thrown that many pitches now we're getting around to the fourth time up against him. He has only gone eight innings once this year. That's when he beat Philadelphia. There's a great bunt. Up quickly Marrero and he will throw out Tony Womack and Willie McGee wanted to make sure that he not only got the force but tagged him out. Womack is gone. There's the sacrifice though and Gallucci's in scoring position with the tying run. So Bucky Showalter going for the tie right here. Some managers might not bunt with your leadoff hitter up. Bucky Showalter says, I'm going to bunt. And here's a guy that not only can bunt, but he's got great speed. And I tell you what, the catcher did a great job. Watch how he gets his ball, turns, and quickly throws. And watch Willie. He had his foot in the bag, but he still <laughs> had to tag him just to make sure. <laughs> Don't give the umpire a chance to no. think that you're off the bat. And Willie did just that. Now Bernard Gilkey. Strike one. Gilkey is grounded out and struck out twice. Kent has tied him up, changing speeds. Coming inside with that fastball. On that slide on the outside corner, comes up and in. One and one. Oh, I just love the way he pitches inside. And you know, he's not missing six inches a foot inside. He's missing three or four inches inside. Just enough to keep him honest. Guerrero is setting up inside. It may change up here because Belushi, who's on second base, may give him location. He'll stay inside. Two balls, one strike. St. Louis won last night by the same one nothing score when Jose Jimenez. And Tony LaRusso's ball club beat the Diamondbacks 1 0. Notice how, when the pitchers and the catchers are talking now, they talk with the gloves over their mouth because there's so many cameras here. There's so many televised, so many people televising the game. They don't want anybody to think that they're listening or trying to read their lips or do anything to try and figure out what is going on. What are they talking about? They might have just been changing the signs right there with the runner on second. There's Delucci representing the time run. Goes back outside with a slider, and they've got David hung up between second and third. They tag him out, then the throw to first, not in time. Delucci is pleading his case, but nope. The third base umpire, Bruce Drummond, says, Young man, you are out. Now Bucky Showoff is going to say he didn't tag him. He's going to lose the battle here. I, I don't think Matt Williams even going to think about throwing to first base unless he had the tag on David DeLucci. Now Bottenfield, once he releases the ball, becomes an infielder. Watch the first thing he does. He looks to second. He knows he's got plenty of time to throw to first, and he catches DeLucci off the bag. Now they got him in a rundown. DeLucci's got to try to make this rundown last long enough where he can get the hitter to second base and Delucci says no they didn't get me. And I said Matt Williams excuse me David Howard watch the way he tags him on the five. David Howard right 
there. Taps him on the thigh. So now Botfield will talk with Eli Marrero. I'll tell you what. Botfield has helped himself twice in this game defensively. Once dropping a pop bunt with runners in first and second and nobody out. Getting the double play. And here, DeLucci has to make sure the ball goes through before he takes third base. You know, he could take three or four more steps off the bag, but then he's got to remain somewhat stable. And, th and then it becomes and then it becomes a foot race. Now Luis Gonzalez, and let's check that run down again from a different angle this time. Now this is a much better angle. Does he get him? <laughs> I don't know. You know, the framing was blocked off, but Howard really sold the play. Luis Gonzalez to right field. Gilkey turns second. He'll go to third. They're going to send him home. The throw to the plate. Not in time. We are tied at one. Well, DeLucci just dodged the bullet by getting tagged out at third base. And we are tied at one, and now with two outs, the potential winning run is on third base. Gonzalez just rips it right down the line, and there's nobody there. The right fielder not playing him anywhere near to pull, and it becomes a foot race. Gilkey around third, they're waving him home. He was leaking oil from third <laughs> to home. <laughs> And there has been the hero all year long in Arizona, Luis Gonzalez, 49 RBIs. Here's Matt Williams, and he fouls off the first pitch, strike one. And Matt Williams has not had many good at-bats in this ball game against Bottenfield. They are staying away, away, away from him. And that base hit for the triplets on their first birthday. Happy birthday, kids. Williams lifts it foul territory. McGee will only watch. It is strike two. But I thought it was pretty significant. A lot of young pitchers, when they've just been broken, they'll come back hard outside. Bottenfield came right out through Matt Williams to change up. Yeah, Bottenfield knows what he's doing. I think he's still pretty calm on the mound. He's had good success against Matt Williams tonight. And I wonder if he's thinking about trying to just go inside off the plate to keep him honest. He's got him in a perfect situation to try it at 0 2. Let's see where the catcher sets up. He better not miss. This guy can turn on an inside fastball. Manny Ibar has joined Scott Radinsky in the St. Louis bullpen. 1 1 score, St. Louis, Arizona. Arizona wins. They'll go three games up on San Francisco in the National League West. Arizona has been in first place since May 28th. A long time. And they have enjoyed it. Second year in the big leagues. Two, two balls and two strikes. Go ahead, run Gonzalez at third base. The RBI leader in the National League swings and misses, striking out as Botfield throws him up in the strike zone. But Arizona ties it on Luis Gonzalez's triple. Matt Williams might be leading the National League in RBIs with 68, but he has had a rough week. And tonight, one for four with three strikeouts. This was the last. With Luis Gonzalez, the go-ahead man at third base, and Matt's so disgusted with himself, <sighs> slams his bat down. I think he, I think in in all, with due respect to, to Matt, I think he thought he should have hit that last pitch. I mean, he has been really bothered by some great pitching tonight on the part of Bottenfield. That pitch, I thought he thought he could have a pretty good rip at, put the ball in play, and that's David DeLucci, who's now in right field. 
And he will hit in that number nine spot. And Dan Plesak, who is now pitching, will hit second. Plesak, of course, just came over in a trade with Toronto. They needed another left hander. All teams need left handers. Seven ball games, ERA of six. Opponents batting average 250. He is primarily against left handed hitters where he has had great success. And there's two left handers due up in this inning with one switch hitter. And this left hander hits it pretty well, but to straightaway center field where Steve Finley is for the first out of the ninth inning. So Darren Bragg is out. And they couldn't have gotten Dan Plesak at a better time. They acquired him on June 12th from Toronto for Tony Batista and John Frascatori. But as soon as they pick him up, Greg Swindell, who they were hoping he would join as two tough lefties in the pen, he goes in the DL. And I think Swindell's going to be back soon. He's going to be back on time, not, not one of those long type injuries that's going to take a month or two. So they'll be strong from the left side in the bullpen. And how about this, Todd Stottlemyre, the last four days he's thrown three times and he has reported good health and he when is, he comes back they might have three lefties in there if, if Brian Anderson goes back in the pen and they say that uh, Stottlemyre is anxious to pitch again <laughs> oh I bet the, he is it's the kind of a guy he is <laughs> I'm anxious I think he's a guy that the trainer might have to tie up and nail to the wall to make sure he doesn't overwork himself well he's got to have the manager and the pitching coach watch him throw or else he'll try to do too much Buck Showalter. Tough manager in his own right with the New York Yankees. He's been with this Arizona organization from its very beginning. Willie McGee. It's a foul into the ground. He's behind the count, nothing in two, but just because it's two strikes and Willie, that doesn't mean he can't line one off the wall. He's one of the best bad ball hitters I've ever seen. Yeah, he doesn't know what the strike zone is. He's just a swinger. And he could put the bad ball in play. If you know, if you throw the ball right down the middle, he might swing and miss it. You might throw him the pitch six inches off outside and wrap it in the right field corner for a triple. That's the way he is. And look at that. Two strikes. He knocks it in the gap in right center field. And he's trying for second. Here's the throw. It is not in time. He slides past the bag and is tagged out by Andy Fox. So he is going to get credit for a double right there because he passes the bag. But he doesn't really argue with the second base umpire. And I think as soon as this ball is hitting right center field, because of the speed of McGee, he knows what he's doing. Dave McKay at first base is not telling him right there, folks. This is a double all the way. Now let's see, does he slide past the bag? Yes, he did. And Andy Fox has the glove on him all the way. Watch the tag here. Got the ball on him. And look at the umpire in great position to make the right call. DeLucci to Fox. Hand off. Tag on. And now they're saying single, and I disagree with the call, but I'm not the official score. It's got to be a double. He passed the bag. Yeah. Right? That's what I think. But David with the assist. Tony Womack was wonderful out there. Throwing out runners from right field. And David just turns in a gem from right. And here's Ray Lankford. So Plesak gets a little help from his defense, and the score remains tied at one here at the top of the ninth inning. See, I think he was trying to go for a triple. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. Yeah. One and two. You know, we had talked a few minutes ago about police act, primarily used against left handed hitters left handers hitting 208 this year against him and I think anytime you have a left handed pitcher who can consistently get out good left handed hitters I don't care how old he is and I don't care what he throws he's always going to have a job and that's why Lankford tried to check his swing. He went around. Please sag with a strikeout to end it. And we head to the bottom of the ninth in Phoenix with a chance for the Diamondbacks to win. St. Louis had a 1 0 lead going to the eighth inning as Edgar Renteria drove home Ray Lankford with a 1 0 score. Then in the eighth inning, 
with two outs. Luis Gonzalez tripled in. Bernard Gilkey that tied it at one. And they held that lead because of a fine play by David DeLucci and the fact that Willie McGee overran second base on this one out double. And this is the correct base running decision to make. I mean, you've got to try to turn a single into a double right here. And McGee's got the speed to do it. He just overslid the bat. You know, Willie, he pulled his hand. He, he, I'm just wondering if his fingers were still there, but he didn't sell it well. Or sometimes the, the guy with the bat, with the guy with the uh, the glove, Fox, might have just taken Pushed his hand and bumped him off the back, which you can do. It's not very nice, though. It's not nice, but it's part of the game. <laughs> There's a ground ball foul. New first baseman Eli Marrera going from catcher to first. And the new catcher is the kid who caught the no hitter last night, Alberto Castillo. Caught Jose Jimenez. No hitter last night. Every catcher loves those experiences. Talk to uh, Fox broadcaster Jeff Torborg. He always talks about the three he got. Here's Finley, deep center field. Racing back to make the catch, Darren Bragg. Well, Monday on the X Files, Mulder locked him up. Now he's released on parole and wants Mulder to pay. The supernatural way. Watch the X Files Monday at 9 on FX. Steve Fizia, Ken Brett here at Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. Here's Travis Lee. Well, Ken, on Thursday, it was Arizona that rallied for three runs in the ninth inning to beat the Cards. It was the 13th time Arizona has won a game in their last at bat. Travis Lee gets him started with a base hit with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning with a solid single to center. The executive producers of FX Baseball Saturday Night are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer of FX Baseball Saturday Night is Larry Myers. Tonight's game was produced by Jim Drake and directed by Dave Hagan. Head of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Well, there's Kelly Stinnett. They have not been able to get him out tonight. A single and a pair of walks. You know, we talk a little bit about Scott Radinsky last year, of course, with the Dodgers, primarily a one inning type of pitcher, very easy delivery, pretty much just fastball slider, good fastball. Had an ERA last year, 2.63. I mean, this guy is a quality left hander. And the Dodgers were looking for left handers at the beginning of the season. Why would they not retain his talent? That I don't know. You know, he has an easy delivery like you talk about it, but it almost seems like the ball explodes out of his hand to home plate. He's got a nice sneaky fastball because of the delivery. Look Those are good numbers. <laughs> an ERA of under three, outstanding. That pitch just misses low, two balls and no strikes. Kelly Stinnett, great option quarterback in Lawton, Oklahoma. Won the state championship. I, of course, I knew I knew you'd have that. <laughs> <laughs> Said they ran the old Nebraska offense. <laughs> the old Nebraska. Now three balls and no strikes. A bad one here puts the winning run one base hit away from ending the ball game. And I got to believe he's going to take at least one right here. Well, he does have pretty good power, though, with seven home runs. Lee at first. He walked him. How about that? Arizona been struggling a little bit at home of late, but they did score three runs on Thursday night to beat St. Louis. Of course, last night the no-hitter thrown against them. They'd like to do this again tonight. Andy Fox is due up, but we're not going to see him. Jay Bell. Jay Bell, who did not get the start tonight. He's going to come off the bench and try to win this ball game for Arizona. So yeah. Jay Bell might have just been getting one of those days off that everybody needs now and then. And check his numbers out. For a second baseman, they are awesome. 22 home runs, 55 RBIs. There are a lot of Diamondback fans that complain when Arizona and Jerry Colangelo, their owner, gave Jay Bell a lot of money to play short or the infield. He's now at second base. 
now he is paying off with leadership and heavy hitting. Well, with Buck Showalter bringing Jay Bell to the plate, Tony LaRusso says that's it for Scott Radinsky, and Radinsky just slammed down the rosin bag and leaves the ball game. Manny Abar will come in now. Field and Brian Anderson both deserve better fates. They both deserve W's and both will receive no decisions. But Scott Radinsky can't lose his game if Manny Abar cannot get Jay Bell or David DeLucci out. His record this year is really fine at three and one with a pair of saves, and he has struck out 40 batters, Ken, with just 11 walks in his 50 and two thirds innings of relief at 99. He has been a real horse this year, pitching very well out of the Cardinal bullpen. He's up against it right here. One base hit, this game more than likely over. Infield, of course, is going to be playing for double play depth. Outfielders have got to come in a step or two to try to cut the run off at the plate. And the very dangerous Jay Bell is at there. He did not start tonight, just given a day off. Now pinch hitting for Andy Fox. Jay takes strike one and Avar really rattled it in there at 92 miles an hour. You know it's interesting the Cardinals only giving up one run in the last game and a half almost two games to Arizona Cardinals had an ERA coming into the series 5.21 15th in the National League the pitching has been excellent the last couple of months. Little chopper to third fielded nicely by David Howard. And he throws it in the dirt, but Eli Marrero takes it out. Moving to third in the play is Travis Lee, and to second base, Kelly Stinnett. You know, David Howard has always been a very good defensive ball player. You know, he came up originally as a third baseman, could pretty much play anywhere in the infield. A little in between hop right there. A little bit of a low throw, but I don't think it quite got in the dirt. So second and third now. A lot of more ways you can score from third base with two outs here. So Pass ball, the wild pitch, ball. And LaRusso knows all about the clutch play of David DeLucci. I mean, look what he has done with runners in scoring position this year. And with his pitch hit single in the eighth inning, David set a single season Arizona mark with nine pitch hits in one year. And we are still in late June. So he has been one of their clutch performers this year. Lefty against righty. That's the only guy that matters. Foul off. They have 13 walk off pieces this year. is an outstanding catcher. He's always had the reputation of being somebody who's going to get in front of that ball, not let it get behind him. That ball gets behind him, walk off. <laughs> and Joe Caragiola, who was in the other booth, was talking about the way he sets himself, has wide stance. Everything's in front of him. He blocks that ball. Not getting by him. I'm going to smother the ball right there. He's got the futuristic style gear on. Now it's a bar against Gallucci. One one the count. David went around. One and two. Manny has a fastball that gets on you in a hurry. Kent Botfield, he was dazzling for eight innings, changing speed, throwing that breaking ball over, coming inside hard with the fastball. And he will get a no decision as he was searching for win number 12. 
Lee at third base, two out. A bars one two pitch to David DeLucci. Just misses inside. Two and two. Did you see the catcher back there lifting his glove up? He wanted a high fastball. Where did he get it? He got it inside about belt high off the plate. So Ibar really dropped that one into 95 miles an hour. Strikes out DeLucci and leaves Lee at third. So we'll head to extra innings here on an FX baseball Saturday night. Tied at one with the Cardinals and Diamondbacks. Manny Ibar snuffed out the Arizona rally in the bottom of the ninth inning, coming in to face David DeLucci and striking him out on this next. Well, this is a nasty, nasty slider. I mean, down and in, not much you could do with that. And in the dugout, how do those Cardinals react? Ibar's got a little style points on the way to the dugout. Tony says, you bet. Let's go to number 10. Let's win this game and get the team back to 500. St. Louis came in at 36 and 37, five and a six and a half games behind Houston, but the Astros lost tonight. Delucci stays in, plays right field. He's been there in the last couple of innings since pinch hitting in the eighth. Ibar will take a seat and likely come out for the bottom of the tenth inning. In the tenth, for St. Louis, Thomas Howard will lead things off. He is one for three in the game. Dan Plesak remains in for Arizona. Plesak throws high. But these guys have been around. Police acts had greater success than Thomas. Thomas has fought through the wars. And a dependable fourth, fifth outfielder now. But for Police Act, he broke into the league in 1986 and is still the all time save leader in Milwaukee history with 133. He had about four straight years where he was their closer, An average 30 saves per season. Drops that slider in there. Two and one. Yeah, his role I think has changed over the years where he was a really a dominant, hard throwing, save type of guy. Now he's primarily against left handers. And he's going to pitch forever as long as he gets him out. <laughs> forever. And when did you finally say so long to baseball, Mr. Southpaw? Yeah, when the old arm went. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Orozco, how old is Jesse? 42. 42, still getting people out. Just kind of slinking it there on the outside corner. St. Louis won last night. They had smiles in the faces about this time. They went nine. Jose Jimenez with the no hitter. Walked only two, struck out eight. We saw another beautifully pitched game by Kent Bottenfield going for his 12th win. He still has a great chance to make the All Star team. Three and two. Randy Johnson had a special game last night, struck out 14. And he leads the National League in strikeouts with 171. He's probably a lock to head to the All Star game this year in Boston. And he passed Don Drysdale in the all time strikeout list last night. Go 3 2. And Lisa comes inside with strike three. Well, Thomas Howard does not like Jeff Nelson's strike zone, but it's been the same, very consistent all night long. That's really all you ask of any umpire. Just ask him to be consistent from the first pitch to the last pitch. And I tell you what, for a, for a hitter to back away from that pitch, you know, that pitch, if it's off the plate, which I don't think it is. It might be off the plate an inch. That's a strike. You see Kelly frame that ball. Well, we see a double switch here. I believe we will as Buck Showalter has come out to talk with Jeff Nelson. Howard is gone. There's a strikeout. And here comes Buck to the mound.
Looks like Vladimir Nunez will be coming in. He was warming up in the pen. And Hanley Frias will come in to play in the infield. We'll come back and tell you all about it right after this. Well, Jay Bell stays at shortstop and on the double switch. We told you about Vladimir Nunez coming in from the bullpen to pitch, and Hanley Frias will go to right field, who is also a guy who is mainly playing the infield in 1999. But Frias will now move to short. Jay Bell goes to second, and Tony Womack will go to right field. So I've got it all figured out. I was checking Vladimir Nunez's numbers. Well, Vladimir has ridden the roller coaster his last couple of times out Thursday allowing a run in the ninth that appeared to be an insurance run for the Redbirds but he ended up with the victory as the Diamondbacks rallied for three of their own. He has walked 15 though in just 26 and two thirds innings. But the 22 strikeouts I think a pretty good indication of the kind of stuff that he has and his ERA is still good. Just misses away one ball and one strike. We've seen a well pitched game tonight. Well, Vladimir played in Cuba, which means he had to defect, and he defected from the Cuban national B team in October of '95 and signed his first pro deal with the Diamondbacks. Ball is low. He was a member of the Scottsdale Scorpions, but Nunez does not start well here with one out in the top of the tenth inning by walking the leadoff man or his lead man, Edgar Renteria. And his story a great one. Now his responsibility get Eli Marrero out. So we've seen a lot of changes defensively tonight. Marrero, the catcher. Goes to first base when McGuire comes out of the ball game. We've had a lot of movement in this, the National League, whereas before in the American League, you know, you have a pitching change and it's pretty much the same kind of lineup. This is a pretty good example of this game right here of what you see on a fairly regular basis in the National League, where a lot of managers try to get the pitcher as far away from the hitting spot as possible. Double switches. Let's worry about the next two innings. When that happens, we'll, we'll think of something in the meantime. Buck and Tony have been busy tonight. That infield now is Williams, Frias, Bell, and Lee around the diamond. Stinnett remains the catcher. The outfielders Gonzalez, Finley, and Womack. Renteria has very good speed at first base. Had just stolen 13 times. Nunez just gives him a look and brings it home for a strike, nothing and two. Let's take a look at the pitch here. Looks like it almost crossed up the catcher there, didn't it? You see the catcher had yeah. problems catching that ball, almost as if he got the wrong pitch. He got the right one because it was strike two, and he caught it. That was the right pitch. <laughs> Might have been the wrong type of pitch. Yeah. Looked like he was leaning just a little bit right there. You catch that slight little lean towards second. We saw first baseman today. All the old. J.T. Snow, did you see that? Oh no, I did not. But you told me about it. It was a great. It's a great story. Carlos Perez bunted for a base hit and drove in a run. Was so excited. J.T. Snow just held onto the baseball. Uh, and when Carlos uh, took his lead, he tagged him out. Carlos got a little antsy. Went off the bag, and of course the pitcher cannot be on the mound. He's got to be on the grass when that happens, or else it's called deception. And the pitcher, Chris Brock, really sold it well. Went back, picked it through the Rosin bag, flipped it down like he was disgusted <laughs> about the base hit. Walked off. JT just tags him, shows the ball to the umpire. See ya, Carlos Perez. I'm sure, Carlos really endeared himself to Davy Johnson on that one. Well, I know somebody endeared themselves to Davey Johnson today. How about Randy Hundley? Or, or Randy's son. Or, Todd. Todd Hundley. With a couple of home runs. 
Fourth last year in the National League with Florida with 41 steals. And Tony does like to run. And here goes Renteria. There's a ground ball hit to short. And it is Bobble. And a safe at first base is the runner, Eli Marrero. So an error on the new shortstop, Hanley Frias. Sometimes the moves you make come back to haunt you. Frias, of course, is an infielder. He's perfectly capable of making the play. Just boots it. And sometimes I think when you come into the ball game, you've been sitting on the bench all night, you're not really in the swing of things. You know, if you're coming up to the game or coming into the game as a pinch hitter, they have those cages underneath the stadium. You can hit for 10 minutes. And you can actually get somebody to throw to you for 10 minutes if you want to, so that when you go up to the plate, you feel pretty comfortable. Hard to get the ground balls thrown to you there because it's all AstroTurf, it's all indoors. Well, the only run that St. Louis scored in this game was unearned, and that came back in the seventh inning. When with one out, just like this situation, Lankford reached on an air, Thomas Howard singled the left, and then Edgar Renteria singled him in. Came up Brian Anderson, who just pitched a gem, eight innings, one unearned run. Now in the tenth inning, another run might score because of that man, Hanley Frias' error. That ball gets away, and there go the runners to second and third. Now a ground ball or a fly ball can get the go ahead run home. This is probably going to be a wild pitch. Make no claims to know what the official score is thinking about. I'm going to go. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say wild pitch. And now you got to ask yourself if you're if you're the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Do we try to squeeze in a situation like this? David Howard's batting eighth. He's not a strong hitter, and all it takes is a ground ball, a bunt in a situation like this where they could conceivably win the ball game. Count two balls and no strikes. LaRusse has been talking with his guys. We saw Show Walter over talking with Brian Butterfield, who's his third base coach when his team is on offense. There you see Renteria at third base, Marrero now at second base. They'll bring their infield in, and I mean way in. And they pitch out, and they'll just intentionally walk David Howard instead of a force at any base. So now the Cardinals have the bases loaded and that's Matt Williams at third base and I think one of the reasons he's so close to third is he's trying to cut down the lead of the runner on third base in a situation like that where the pitcher can throw over there almost like a pickoff play. And now the Keystone can play back looking for the double play as Alberto Castillo. The base is loaded in his career. He is two for nine and Alberto will dig in. One of the stars in last night's win defensively, catching the no hitter by Jose Jimenez. Now he'd love to end this game. Or at least send it to the bottom of the 10th with St. Louis leading. It is a 1 1 game, 10th inning. You're on an FX baseball Saturday night. One thing you might consider here if he does hit the ball on the ground, catchers don't normally run that well, but the runner on first base, David Howard, not being held on. Good opportunity for him on a ground ball, try to break up the double play. Baseball is a game of the little things and if there's a ground ball to short or a ground ball to second Howard can get down there and do a little damage because he's going to get that extra five or six steps. It could win the ball game for St. Louis. And these are all decisions that you have to make when you're the manager of a club. Do you want to hold them on cut down the lead or do you want to play off the bag and give him an opportunity to do something like that. Base is loaded one out top of the tenth inning. And Castillo skies it to left. Renteria tags. The catch is made. Here comes Edgar. Here comes the throw. And he is safe. St. Louis leads 2 to 1. Well, you couldn't have asked for a closer play at the plate right there. The ball was not hit all that far. Gonzalez one step and he's firing he's firing right to the plate. 
The throw is pretty much on the mark, and it's a good call by the plate umpire. Well, that's a great call by the plate umpire on a ball that Gonzalez is going to make any improvement at all. Maybe another foot or two towards the plate, but still a very good throw by Luis. So Castillo gets his job done with the sacrifice fly. Now the rookie Joe McEwen comes to the plate who extended his hit streak this season to 18 straight games. That base hit in the third inning. Since that time he's grounded out twice. He's now one for four. Runners are second and third. Both advanced on the throw home. David Howard went to second. Eli Marrero to third. In the bottom of the tenth inning, Tony Womack will lead things off for Arizona, followed by Hanley Frias and then Luis Gonzalez. McEwing chops it foul. One and one. Russo got his 1600th win last night. There's Mark Connor, pitching coach, right next to Buck Showalter. Mark, one of those guys from the Yankee organization that Buck took over here. There's Marrero. Strike one and two to Joe. Doing a terrific story, battling through the minor leagues. Parts of four seasons at Double A baseball last year. Double A hit over 300. Now making the big league because of his play during spring training. Everyday player now, and he chases that pitch in the dirt, but it was tipped and not held onto by the catcher Kelly Stinnett. If he holds onto it, well, McEwing strikes out. I don't know how he got a bat on this ball. I'm telling you, this is a slider down in a way that most guys don't even come close to getting a bat on. He just got a piece of it. Look, where, look at where he ends up. He ends up the left-hander's batting box. Do you throw him the same pitch? Why not? He'll chase that in the dirt. He's got two on. He left that up in the zone. Funny how he goes through that swing all the time. He's got that very high swing as part of his routine that he uses. And St. Louis's bullpen is quiet, which means we're going to see the same guy on the mound in the bottom of the tenth. Manny Ibar. And there's the same pitch. This time he lays off it, and it's two balls, two strikes. There is Manny who did quite a job in the bottom of the ninth inning. A critical strikeout of David DeLucci. Runners in scoring position with a man at third. This would have been the winning run. Ground ball up the middle. That's trouble. Backhanded by Jay Bell. His throw is just in time. Excellent play by Jay Bell. But St. Louis scores the go ahead run to take a 2 1 lead over Arizona. The Cardinals have a 2 1 lead over the Arizona Diamondbacks in the sacrifice fly by Alberto Castillo. Edgar Renteria scored the run. He was at third base. And let's listen in as Renee Latchman, the third base coach for St. Louis, told him to go. Tag up! Tag up! Go on him! Go on! <laughs> I heard uh, Renee make the call. He yeah. said safe, so it's got to be safe. Yeah, I, I think that I was that. The, I thought it might have been the plate umpire, but you're right. It was Renee who said safe. Of course, we haven't got the plate guy, Mike. One of these days, <laughs> boy, we get some good stuff. We might oh, that guy. Man. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but we would have to uh, really <laughs> have our tape operator be very critical of what we could air. It was another unearned run, though. Two unearned runs allowed by Arizona pitchers. Actually, by Arizona's defense, because it wasn't the pitcher's fault. 
Ryan Anderson did his job beautifully through eight innings. You know, one of the things the Cardinals have done a very poor job of this year is winning when they score less than four runs. Look at this wide stance by Alberto Castillo. I mean, he's very mobile behind the plate. He can cover a lot of ground, block a lot of pitches. He looks like one of those Land Rovers on Mars. Right now he gets down in the stance. There's the bunt. Third baseman Howard. Boy, is he good. He and Matt Williams covered the bunts as well as anybody, and there's the first out in the 10th inning. When David Howard first came to the big leagues, he had the reputation of being a great defensive ball player. That's one thing that hasn't changed. If anything, he's probably gotten better as a big league third baseman. The question is, was he going to hit? That's really not that bad a bunt, but look how quickly he's on it because he was thinking bunt. I mean, he throws out a guy with good speed by five or six steps. He can play some defense, that man right there. Good job by David Howard. That's the first out of the bottom of the 10th inning. Now Hanley Frias, and he takes ball one. Hanley just four for 23, but he had a game winning two run double on Thursday. One of 13 games that Arizona has won in their final at bat. Look at that wide stance by the catcher. He really. Doesn't he look like one of those uh, he looks like one of the, he, machines they yeah. have on Mars? That's been he looks like one of those catchers who's about 6'4 or 6'5 who's got to get down by spreading his legs so far. And the equipment, of course, all gray. There he goes. There's that solid target. And he, you know what? What's interesting, that, that pitch may have been a little low, but the way he caught it, he didn't turn his glove over. One of the, one of the things that a lot of catchers do is, now watch when he puts his target up. He doesn't drop the glove down and bring it back up. Once he puts the target there, watch this. The glove's going to stay right there. Watch. Stays right there. Gives the pitcher something to look at. A lot of times you'll see catchers, they'll put the glove up like that. They'll bring the glove down and bring it back up. Well, what's the pitcher looking at? The pitcher's looking at the glove. Leave the glove there. He does a great job of that. And a pitcher has to appreciate that. A catcher working so hard. Here's the target. Here's the target, Manny. Ooh, yeah. Make the look, pitcher look at, him, look at him fire it back, too. It's always He's a, into it. It's a little more embarrassing when the pitcher throws the ball to the catcher and the catcher throws it back harder. <laughs> Say, let's go. I like the way this guy catches. Take a little off here. This is a big pitch right here. Change speeds, pops him up. Tough play, center field, and there he is, Darren Bragg, for the second out. Pretty good job right there by Abar. He falls behind three and one. Comes back and throws two strikes. Not only two strikes, but the three-two pitch fools him and fools him badly. When you talk to Dave Duncan. About Manny Ibar, he says he's been a workhorse. He's done a great job for us this year. Well, Ibar has to face the guy who looked like he was the hero in the eighth inning, Luis Gonzalez, when he tripled in the tying run that scored Bernard Gilkey in the eighth inning, and Gonzalez, who has been one of the outstanding hitters in the National League this year, hitting 368 with 13 home runs, drove in his 49th in that eighth inning. Can he do it again? He needs a big fly right here. Sends it up the middle, and the time run is on. So Luis Gonzalez, two for five in this game. He is such a good hitter. He just gets base hit after base hit. One of the funny things about the fact that he is with Arizona now, watch him just go with this pitch. Ball tailing away from him, just goes right up the middle. You know, they picked up. Luis Gonzalez from Detroit. Detroit's paying part of the salary this year. It's pretty scary, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and he's having this kind of year. Having this kind of year. Well, here's Matt Williams, who's had a tough night up to this point. We're going Gonzo for Luis here. Matt Williams, you're right, is one for four. The only hit was an infield hit back in the second inning. He has struck out three straight times since. One swing by the National League's RBI leader could win it for Arizona. They have been an unbelievable clutch team this year. 
Matter of fact, against Montreal earlier this season, they won the games with home runs in their final at bat all three games. High bar throws outside, ball one. High bar trying to win his fourth game of the season. He is three and one, ERA under four. Came inside, fouled off, one and one. What's Matt looking for here? Pitch to drive. He's looking for a pitch, I think, on the inside half of the plate that he can drive somewhere. Gonzalez with a two out single. He's at first base. High bar against Williams. The count is one and one. And if I'm high bar, I'm going to try to throw him the save pitch. I threw to David DeLucci to strike him out in the ninth inning. That nasty, nasty little breaking ball, which was down and in to the left hander, which would be down and away from Matt Williams. If you're going to miss inside, miss well inside. Try to get him out away. And they're coming in. And Matt was on that pitch and fouled it straight back. Two balls and two strikes. Boy. And then he says, give me a new baseball. I tell you what, the catcher and the pitcher, they're working, aren't they? They are. Castillo is really forcing him to go to work, and Ibar is responding. I mean, you can see it in their body language. Well, how about that slider here? Yeah, I think it's a great time for it. And Tony's talking with his catcher, Castillo. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Bottom of the tenth inning, St. Louis with a 2-1 lead over Arizona. Matt calls time. Tony thought this pitch was a strike. The pitch was outside a little low, Tony. Gonzalez off him first. He's going to get a couple of extra steps here. Gonzalez goes. Matt swings, sends a ground ball second base. McEwing bobbles it, throws, gets the win, and St. Louis beats Arizona two to one. Castillo almost took Ibar's arm off with the high five. Well, a nice win by St. Louis. They've won two in a row with the no hitter last night by Jose Jimenez. Came back with a great pitching performance by Kent Bottenfield and Manny Ibar. Well, our Kodak play of the game has to be the sacrifice fly when Edgar Barrentario was on third base. Luis Gonzalez with an excellent throw home. But Renteria, the speedster that he is, beats the throw by an eyelash. That made it 2-1, and Ibar would hold on and get the victory. The final score again is Tony La Russa's Cardinals 2 and the Diamondbacks 1. Join us Thursday on Fox Sports Net when you'll see Arizona at Cincinnati or Detroit at the New York Yankees. Please check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Next week, FX Baseball Saturday Night takes its place as part of our Saturday Night Bash with the Seattle Mariners and the Texas Rangers at 8.30, 5.30 Pacific. Coming up next in Living Color on the East Coast, Penn and Teller on the West Coast. For Ken Brett, I'm Steve Fiziak. You've been watching Baseball Saturday Night on FX.